This is the default preset in Vital. As a basis for our sound, we are going to use a sine wave. So let's just change this to a sine wave. And if you've ever synthesized a kick or a snare, the procedure is very similar to this. We are going to use LFO1 to create the volume shape for our percussion. So usually the shape is similar to something like this. And let's just drag this to the level of our oscillator one. So now we have a sound like this. And now to make this a bit more interesting, we are going to use noise on top of that. But we are not going to simply layer the noise with oscillator 1. We are going to use frequency modulation. We can make use of this in the section down here and choose FM sample. And now if we activate the white noise, we can actually turn the level of this down. Now we have this effect. But to make this sound a bit more organic, we don't want it to play at the same percentage all the time. So we're going to use LFO2 and just put this on FM sample so we can modulate this as well. And just maybe draw in a shape like this. So now we have at least some movement in there. But to me, white noise doesn't really work that well for the sound that I'm going for. What I've found works best is uh, brown noise. So now with brown noise, we have a sound like this. However, what I also want is some sort of pitch modulation. So I'm going to use LFO3 and actually I use this on the pitch of the sample. And again, we are going to draw in a similar shape to the one of LFO1. Maybe increase this a bit. Now we can also add another sine wave because this one is basically only here for the frequency modulation. And we can use this one and add LFO3 on the pitch here as well. And also add LFO1 on the level of this. And now we can head over to the effects section and just enable the multiband compressor and the distortion and give this a bit more drive. And then we can also add some EQ. And usually what I like to do for this is to boost the lows and the highs. And at the end, use a reverb to make it less dry. And cut the highs. Now to make this a bit more organic and less static sounding, we can actually modulate the EQ here. If you actually want to play this on a keyboard, or if you just want to draw in the MIDI velocity, you can actually just use the velocity parameter down here. And maybe put this on the gain for the lows here. Just turn this down so at the lower velocity we actually have less lows and the higher the velocity the more we are going to boost the lows. And we can do the same for the highs here. Also put the velocity on the gain and maybe turn this down and try it around here. And I have a little section down here in a MIDI clip where I'm just increasing the velocity of this. Now we can sort of fine tune this a bit. can also put it on the mix of the multiband compressor. We also put it on the highs here. And then pretty much also fine tune the setting of LF1. What you can also do is you can use unison on oscillator 2 if you want to make it wider. Maybe increase the lows here and play around with the cutoff of the reverb. Maybe add a compressor after this. Just boost it into the soft clipper if you have glue compressor. Maybe increase the range for the highs here with the velocity. Of course, you can also deactivate the reverb here and just use a different one that you like. It's just important then, depending on what kind of speed you're playing with this, you might need to have to adjust LFO1 here or the frequency of LFO1. But in general with this, you can easily control how tight you want the sound to be. And this is very useful to give organic sounds more punch as a layer, but you can also use it on its own. You just probably have to tweak it quite a bit, depending in what kind of context you're using it.